after cancelling the planned purchase of military helicopters from Russia out of concern about Western sanctions, Philippine officials are now contemplating a U.S. offer to supply heavy lift helicopters similar to its extensively used Chinooks, according to the Philippine ambassador to Washington on Monday. Due to worries about potential Western sanctions, which could slow down quick bank transfers of the revenue Filipino workers bring home from the U.S. and other Western countries, then-President Rodrigo Duterte allowed the termination of the inked agreement to buy 16 Russian Mi-17 helicopters. Romualdez claimed that Washington did not put pressure on the Philippines to renounce the contract with the Russians worth 12.7 billion Philippine pesos. However, he warned that countries who would buy Russian technology might be subject to Western penalties in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February. I think it was really prudent especially for President Duterte to approve the cancellation of that contract because it can save us a lot of trouble, Romualdez said in an online news conference. The Chinooks, according to Ron Wildes, will replace the country's current equipment for troop movement and emergency readiness. According to Ron Wildes, Washington is open to negotiating a deal for the amount the Philippines was planning to spend on the Russian helicopters, and the agreement will probably cover maintenance, repair, and parts. The South Korean-built KF-21 Burmi, which is currently undergoing development and flight testing, is being considered by the Philippine Air Force as a potential competitor for their multi-role fighter project. When questioned if the KF-21, whose airframe is touted as being stealthier than any fourth-generation fighter, was being taken into consideration for the MRF project, Philippine Air Force spokesperson Colonel Maynard Mariano offered the said reply. In a recent message to the Philippine news agency, he stated, It is a possibility given that the MRF project has not been funded yet. The KF-21 can be a contender for the MRF project, Mariano added that the KF-21, whose prototype made its first flight on July 19, is being closely watched by the Philippine Air Force. The Philippine Air Force is monitoring this, we cannot close our options when there are new systems that may be able to compete with other systems and which may fit into our requirement for defense. In this day and age, the prototyping stage for any system can be done faster due to the available technology, and we might see it fielded soon. Mariano added. The Philippine Air Force's MRF project requires at least 12 units of fourth-generation fighters with a minimum range of 250 nautical miles and the ability to integrate with existing radar systems. This project would cost about PHP 61 billion once funded. Mariano also anticipates that the KF-21 would develop into a competitive combat aircraft, comparable to the Philippine Air Force's 12 F-A-50 PHS from Korea Aerospace Industries KAI. The current top two contenders for the MRF project are Lockheed Martin's F-16 and Saab's J-39 Gripen. Both are already in service with proven capabilities while the KF-21 Burmi is still under development. When the Philippines is prepared to discuss its submarine acquisition program, the French government will be willing to resume discussions, according to a recent statement by French Ambassador Michel Bacos. Although a contractor has not yet been identified, the Philippine Navy stated last year that if it weren't for the coronavirus pandemic, a submarine deal would have been concluded sometime in 2021 or the first semester of 2022. France offered a proposal, according to Bacos, who also stated that talks with the Philippines were ongoing. France is obviously committed to working more closely with the Philippines and have a more strategic relationship with the Philippines so we are ready should the Philippines make a decision. We are ready to work on that perspective with them, she said during a strat base organized symposium on revolutionizing the Philippines' defense posture with France and the Indo-Pacific held in Mondaluyong City. We think it's really important to be ready. We can provide this collaboration in this very important domain. Our stance is also protecting sovereignty, to defend sovereignty and sovereign rights, which are very important, she added. Another submarine offer much talked about recently is that from Korea, with DSME's 1,400-ton submarine being offered under a total solution package which also includes crew training and soft loan to fulfill the Philippine Navy's submarine acquisition project. Which of these planned acquisitions do you think will be completed first? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please do watch out for our next video only here on, Tiger, Philippines.